Welcome everyone to another episode of our T2 interview sessions. And today we have none other than Kristen Carlson. Kristen, you want to say hi to everyone? Hi everybody. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for taking the time out to do this with us. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions that we will be asking you today. Um, but before we really get into those questions, Christian, we've got a mini segment or a mini game that we like to call T2 Hot Seat Challenge. Um, this challenge is going to be really fun. So to the people out there that are listening to this video, but you're not too sure what this is, uh, it's going to be a very quick game uh, that we will be playing with Christian. Okay. So in this short game, it will be 60 seconds long. And in that 60 seconds, I will be throwing questions to Christian. All right. Questions of general knowledge questions, table tennis facts, or just any random questions. All right. So yes, Christian, get yourself ready. Um, yep. 60 seconds of questions is going to come at you. Uh, and if you get the answers correct, it will be one point. Okay, okay. Yeah, and just one last thing would be that in the final 24 seconds, okay, of the 60 seconds, there will be a bonus segment where you can get two points instead of mm -hmm. one. So if you get any answers correct in the final 24 seconds, you'll be worth two points. That's where you okay. want to get your answers correct. Okay. Okay, so, well, if you're ready to go, uh, yeah, I'm going to go, go along with it. All right, awesome. Where was table tennis invented? Uh, England. Where is the national flower? What is the national flower of Sweden? Uh, no idea. Skip. According to Google, how many people are there in the world as of 2020? Uh, Nine billion. What is the size of a table tennis ball? Uh, 42 millimeters. How many medals did Sweden win at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics? <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Solve this 90, uh, 98 multiplied by 2. Uh, 196. In what year did table tennis become an Olympic sport? 1988. Which country has the most islands in the world? Japan. <laughs> Can skip? Name me a table tennis player that starts with the letter M. Matthias Falk. All right, that's it. There you go. Good Easy. job. <laughs> Good job. Japan, think... but Japan cannot do correct. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to make another guess? Where do you think uh which country in the world has the most islands uh, apart from Japan? Uh, it's not Japan, uh, but it's probably some um, in Southeast Asia. It's closer than you think. Yeah, it's closer than I think. It's close to where you're from. <laughs> Is Denmark? <laughs> It's Sweden. Wait, what? Sweden. Sweden actually has the most islands in the world. Today I learned. Yeah, today you learned something. You, you, you wanna, I had no you idea. Wanna, yeah, you, you want to make a guess. How many islands are there in Sweden? Like the number. Uh, it's pretty. Like it's, what, it's what do you call an island? Do you call it just a simple rock an island or what? <laughs> apparently, yes. Apparently, <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's can what be many. Sweden did. Uh, yeah, so. Know. It's actually 220,000. Jesus, that's my yeah. name. <laughs> you, you can go Google it and you can find out. But I, I, no, I believe you. I believe you. It's no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, well done. Um, I think you did really well for this uh, challenge of ours. Um, at the end of the day, we will be interviewing many other athletes as well, like yourself. Uh, they yeah. are participating in this game as well, uh, this challenge as well. So sure. we will have like a virtual leaderboard and depending on how good you fare in the game, uh, mm -hmm. I will tally up your scores um, and we will be able to give some prizes out to everyone as well. Okay. Um, you know, the fun games aside, there's just this one burning question that I really want to get from you. Um, you know, obviously you're from Sweden, yeah? So yeah. there's this very famous Swedish furniture, co furniture company. I just want to mm -hmm. know, is it, is it, how do you pronounce it? Is it Ikea or Ikea? Uh, I like IKEA is the English pronunciation. So I mean, it's most common in the world to hear IKEA, but we in yep. Sweden we say IKEA. E. IKEA. I IKEA. IKEA. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It, yeah, it is a bit different, but um, to the listeners out there, I guess if you hear the segment, you want to go ahead and say IKEA no, instead. No, obviously, moving on as well. Um, right now, where uh, you just finished training, uh, you're probably probably pretty tired, but. Could you just maybe just you know give us an update of like um what have you been up to lately ever since i guess since the olympics 
Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, we've been busy with the club. I play for Borussia Düsseldorf in Germany mm. in Bundesliga. Yep. Um, so we've been pretty intense with them. We had a good start this season. We had a very great season last year, so we're keeping on that track. Um, as far as international tournaments, I played in Qatar, where I managed yep. to beat a good uh, Japanese player, um, mm. Tugami. And then I lost to Simon Gozi. Uh, so it was a it was a decent tournament. And uh, uh, yeah, last two weeks, uh, two weeks ago, I had a um, hamstring injury in a training camp in Sweden. Uh, where I pulled my hamstring muscle a little bit. It's it's not yeah. bad, but uh, it's uh, it's risky if you start too early with this sort of injury. Yeah. They can easily repeat. So we're yeah, trying yeah. to take it a little bit slower. Uh, this mm. week we of course have Champions League, so I hope to be ready in the end of the group stage, which would be on Thursday or Friday. So that that's Ooh. the goal. Like yeah. you guys are hoping to hoping to win win it all the way. Yeah, I mean we we won it last year and. Um, Uh, Orenburg has a very, very strong team this year with mm. Dimitri Orgsherov, Lin Yu yeah. and uh, Hugo Calderano and Freitas. They, they have really, really a strong team. But uh, of course, yeah. when you won the last year, you don't want to be worse this year. So that's that's the goal for sure. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of pressure on you guys to come back as, I guess, defending champions. But sure. defending the title is not easy, am I right? <laughs> no, it's difficult. But, but I mean, we, we have faith in our with how we're doing things in Borussia and uh, I think we will be a very strong contender this year as well. Awesome. Well, I guess like, you know, a lot of fans, I guess, want to know more about you as well. And I guess myself as well included. Um, apart from table tennis, um, is there any other sports that you watch or play? Uh, no, I'm not really, uh, really a, like a maniac sports fan. Uh, I've never <laughs> been. Uh, I look a lot of table tennis. Like when I, I fortunate, unfortunately had to withdraw from Tunis. I, I looked like six hours a day at home. It felt like so. I, yeah. I spend most of my time if I if I do look at sport, I, it's uh, 100% table tennis almost. Sometimes football. Oh uh, yeah, football. Because I, I think you when you were it was mentioned that when you were younger you used to play football. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, I was I was pretty decent. Um, but uh, I had to choose when I was 15, going to when you choose a high school in Sweden, and uh, I decided to move uh, three hours away from my home to have a shot of becoming better at table tennis. They have like these high schools in Sweden where uh, normally you go, you go three years in high school in Sweden, but uh, on some sports uh, high schools mm -hmm. you can do four years, and then you have two extra practices in the middle of school time to the so they prolong the education a bit there so that was good oh wow that's interesting so i guess why do you actually transition from like football that uses your legs a lot to something like table tennis like why did it happen and how did it happen i mean like, i i play table tennis also like simultaneously when you're young you you yeah All, all the things I did was uh, try new sports and everything but maybe <laughs> football and table tennis was the two things i was pretty good at so yeah. Yeah. And then I, I remember when I was the 15, 16, uh, and there you had like a choice. It was impossible to keep up with both if you wanted to improve. So and then, mm. then it became table tennis. I, I can't really answer why. I think I was better at table tennis. <laughs> and obviously you had a lot of fun as well, right? Fun is an important yeah. element. Yeah, sure. For me, for me especially. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, obviously table tennis is a big part of your life. And you did mention that even though you're, uh, you, you're like not in Tunisia, and you're injured, you still pretty much like surround yourself with table tennis. But is there any other hobbies that you have? I read uh, a lot of books, but the last two years I actually dropped down on book reading a little bit. I don't know exactly why, but I have a small library at home, mostly fiction. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy reading books. Um, but lately more, I, I'm a huge movie fan. I like going to the cinema. Uh, so yeah, cinema is probably my biggest uh, interest of movies in general so what, what movies do you like like is there any favorite ones that you normally go to like the marvel movies or no i don't really have a, a genre that's uh, yeah. i maybe sci-fi is the closest to my heart but uh, it's not uh, mandatory to look sci-fi movies I, i enjoy all the genres really. fair enough if i were to ask you what's your best recommended sci-fi movie right now what would it be I was at Dune uh, two two weeks ago in the cinema, and I was actually positively surprised by it. So you should check out Dune. It's currently on cinemas, I think, worldwide. So yeah, Dune. it is. 
And I think that's like a remake of the very yeah, old one back then. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you, you are also a sci-fi fan, or what? <laughs> uh, I am quite a bit of it. Like, if you yeah. ask me which is the best sci-fi movie, uh, like, I think I really like uh, Interstellar, if you watch that. Uh, yeah, I have... Uh... I actually have uh, a lot of things from Interstellar. I actually have a watch from it right now. Wow, really? You want to show it to us? This is the one uh, Cooper had. Oh, well, that's the exact same one that he had. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. that's probably my uh, favorite uh, movie as well. I actually consider this is the only thing, time I considered to having a tattoo was to tattoo Stay in Morse on my. On my wow. Yeah. Man, so so have you actually tattooed stay in, in Moscow? No, no, no I didn't. I didn't. I, I don't have any tattoos, <laughs> but I considered it. So, yeah. Uh, That's interesting. I'm a huge Interstellar fan. So nice to that you are also are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I'm sure a lot, many of the viewers out there, if you haven't watched Interstellar or Dune, go catch it because it's great movies. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> they're, they're really good. Apart from like, I guess, you know, movies and stuff, like music wise, do, do you like have any favorite genre of music that you listen to? Yeah, uh, I am actually a, quite a, a metal fan. I like uh, metal. Um, uh, so, yeah, okay. heavy metal and a little bit harder. Um, <laughs> last couple of uh, like months, I've gone back a little bit to the grunge era with Nirvana and uh, wow. and Chains. And, uh, I'm more yeah, of a rock guy you, when it comes to music. That's great. And, and do you normally listen to those music before a game? Or is that yeah. like your... Yeah, exactly. They can pump me up, and uh, if I'm sometimes too ner like nervous in front of a big game, then mm -hmm. I'll tend to listen to a little bit slower songs. But if I if I feel I need to get this pumped up, then uh, sure. Then metal, metal is the way. Metal is the way, indeed. And any chance you you play any musical instruments like the guitar? No. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, like my music teacher in school said, I was uh, musically handicapped, so I had no talent in music. It's all right. It's all right. It's, you, you're good in table tennis, so that's <laughs> good enough. <laughs> Thanks. Man, that's awesome, man. I mean, like, honestly speaking, like, I wouldn't expect metal because, like, you know, metal can be really loud and everything. Yeah, but, sure. And, you know, I just was very curious as well, you know, obviously, this is a question that uh, I throw to people sometimes, but just on to you right now, you know, if you have a choice, would you rather have super strength or would you be able to, or would you like to be able to teleport? Which one would it be? Teleport. For sure, easy. I know. As as like a sci-fi guy, I mean teleportation, obviously, right? Time travel. Yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> tough, like save, saves a lot of time for uh, table tennis tournaments as well. Oh yes, you could be like <laughs> um, you could like wait for a day before, or like in a, an hour before the game, and yeah, exactly. World chance. Yes, so. Can warm Just up teleport. at home. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect thing. That's great. Well, I would prefer teleportation as well. I think that's that's awesome. Well, I, I guess another um, thing that I will move on to right now is like, you know, in table tennis, obviously, um, can you just bring us back to how your table tennis career really started out? Were there any ups and downs? Was there any time where you felt like it was really difficult? Yeah, sure. I, I started when I was eight. Uh, I went with a friend uh, and I really liked it. I was, I was not uh, particularly good anymore, uh, up to maybe 13, 14. Um, then I started to improve. Uh, and then I, I moved uh, away from home when I was 15, 16, so high school. Mm. Yep. Uh, and that was quite difficult for me in the beginning. Uh, living alone uh, when you were 16, I was really not uh, super prepared for it. I didn't, uh, yeah, I, I, I could have done that, some things better there for sure with the school and everything. And yeah, there was actually a point where I considered to, to stop with table tennis. Uh, mm. it, was, uh, it was hard. I felt like I was uh, stamping on the same position for a couple of years almost. So, mm. um, and then uh, something happened. Uh, some minor uh, things changed. Um, I tried to take it more seriously. I improved some things, uh, and um, yeah, after that, it had been uh, quite the uh, yeah. I don't want to say an easy journey, but yeah, yeah. things have gone out smooth for me. Like, I have been lucky mm. in many regards. Like, I have not been injured uh, until I was, yeah, I had to, I had a surgery when I was 29 for the first time. It's, that's like, uh, it's fortunate if you're compared to many others. So, mm. yeah, I've, I've been fortunate. I think I have uh, taken care of uh, a lot of things good. So, yeah, probably. Yeah, for sure. I think that's good because being an athlete like yourself, 
injuries are something that will happen very, very frequently if you don't take care of your body, right? So can you just share with us what are some of the things that you do to make sure that you do that? Like, do you go to the gym? Do you watch your diet? Or is there any tips that you can share with us? I mean, we have we have scheduled gym sessions two times a week with our physical coach in this this and I think that's really really good. Um, yep. He he knows our bodies quite well, and uh, yeah, with him it's it feels very good. And then, like you practice quite a lot, so I mean that benefits your like general health as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. It's, good. it's more about the older you get. I realize that it's. Uh, more the things in between practices which are important so mm. i i'm in that transition now where i realize if i practice too much or too hard when i'm not fully concentrated or fully fit then uh, my body breaks easier easier now than 10 years ago so <laughs> i really have to take care of a little bit of that well it's better late than never at least you know about it right now so moving forward you gotta always concentrate give you 100 percent. yeah definitely <laughs> Can you recall maybe the first time when you represent Sweden for an international competition? Uh, for seniors, it was actually the Swedish Open. Um, mm. That was pretty special. Uh, I got a shot to play there and I actually managed to beat one of the... There was a group stage uh, back then. The system was different. And I actually beat uh, Stefan Feger, one of my former teammates now. And that was a huge success for me because he was he was better clearly yeah. and that was uh, really I, I still remember it so that was a pretty special victory for me. do you know like you know what, what, when was your favorite winning moment like was there any one game or maybe this one competition that you really like really met is very memorable for you uh, yeah i mean we have qu quite a few but i remember clearly like the world championship bronze in Halmstad was special in teams um, that was very special when we beat england in the quarterfinal i at this i remember very clearly and also the first time I won Champions League with my French club Pontoise. Yeah. This was really I I was the one who was fortunate enough to win the final match of the of the leg. Entire. So wow. that was that was that was pretty special. That was really special. This one I recall also perfectly. Yeah, and I guess during those games, you know, I just want to ask this question to you. Like, would you like the crowd, okay? The crowd to be against you or with you? Which, which would you prefer? As the person playing with me, with you. Yeah. So, have you ever had an experience where the crowd was against you and you kind of got like pretty, like swayed by it? No, not really. Uh, I mean, I I like uh, people around. Doesn't matter if they're against or for. <laughs> but if I could choose, then yeah. for me, of course. But in I remember these Champions League semifinals and finals where it's quite mm -hmm. a lot of spectators and it's a uh, important matches. Of course, the the spectators they should be against you if you're on, yeah. the, on the, the away turf. Yeah. So I mean that's that's just normal and natural and uh, nah, I've never had any fights with any <laughs> like that. So no, yeah. I, I I thoroughly enjoy if it's a lot of spectators. This is one of my yeah what I like the most about uh, playing. And I think about sport in general, like any sport that have like spectators watching, it always gives you a different element, especially for the players yourself. It's very different from playing in an empty arena, am I right? Yeah, yeah. but during COVID now, when we played last year and we couldn't have any spectators, I remember it, it's really different. It's harder <laughs> for me to motivate myself without people there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I realized last year, so I'm happy that the crowd is back in Germany. And what is something that you like to see, you know, in the future of table tennis in Sweden? Like, do you see the sport becoming as popular as like maybe football, even ice hockey, or what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have produced uh, really good results now. Like the golden era of Sweden was uh, unfathomable good. Like they were insane, and uh, it was uh, it was so hype. Uh, the mm. table tennis this this type of generation, I think, is difficult to reproduce. But then it was a uh, maybe 10 years, 15 years after these legends that uh, it was mm. a little bit going down for Sweden. And now the last uh, eight years or seven, six years, I think really we have done a lot to, to bring the sport back. We have delivered results. We have taken world medals, yeah. world championship medals, yeah. Europeans. Uh, we just missed this Olympic uh, medal maybe. But uh, I mean, we have consistently won uh, big matches. We have taken yeah. many medals. So I, I hope that this could... Uh, 
spark this uh, interest for table tennis again. So yeah, I think we I we we need to improve how we promote table tennis in Sweden. That's uh, one of the main things I think because we have delivered a lot of good results, but still the numbers are declining quite fast of what I've understood. So mm. we need to yeah really improve how to market so the players maybe and uh, mm. the success. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's that's the main thing I want to see in Sweden, like how we, um, yeah, how we market uh, table tennis. I think like what you said before, you and your the other Swedish players as well. You guys have recently brought a lot of success to the nation, so hopefully it brings a bit of a momentum, and mm-hmm. we will see things. People start picking up the rackets at the community centers around and just yeah, playing exactly. table tennis. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, it has to start there, you know, when the, in the schools, in the yeah, yards yeah. or whatever. Yep. That's, that's, uh, that's definitely where it should start. Yeah, the youth is where we should invest ourselves definitely. in, like, and the sport in. Well, sure. well if, if anything, like, you know, is there any, maybe some rising stars that the fans should be looking out for coming up from Sweden? Is there anyone that you can think of right now? I mean, we have a really three young talented guys. I know that one of them is David Bjerkrid. I, I, uh, mm. he's, uh, he's playing with a lot of feeling, a lot of touch. And we have one in Halmstad. I yeah. can't, for the love of God, remember his name, but he's also very good. He plays of the style of Matthias Falk with pimples. Wow. Mm. Um, so we have some, yeah, some prospects or whatever you want to call them, but we, we definitely, I think it looks good for Swedish table tennis in the future. We have a really strong team not right now with uh, Matthias Falk, myself, uh, Anton mm. Schellberg, yes. Ruth Mergård, uh, Jon Persson. I mean, we, yeah. have, we have a really strong lineup. Elias yeah. Lander is also improving. So Absolutely. I think we need to also realize that maybe because this, I mean, me and Matthias, we're not young anymore, but we still have, I mean, six, seven, eight years, good years of table tennis, at least in us. So I think yeah. we have a really good chance to finally beat the something. Germans, you know, in Europeans yeah. or taking these long steps. So um, I really hope that we can do that. Yeah. And obviously the world championships coming up right now. What What is your, maybe you and your team, is, do you guys have any aim or any, what's your um, objective? I mean, the last world championship was a huge success for Sweden when Matthias Falk won his silver medal, of course. Mm. Uh, me and Matthias, we have been close to reaching a medal in um in doubles that's our goal right uh, this year um, so yeah a medal a medal i think is our goal as uh, as sweden we we want okay. to keep delivering medals i mean it was quite some championships ago since we didn't take a medal um in the worlds or europeans so we we want to keep that level high and uh, consistent uh, i think that's the key awesome and maybe who are some of the potential challenges or rivals that you can think of that might be your toughest obstacle to face? To I mean, uh, this year yeah. special also because Malong and Shushin would not play, they're I not think. They're not playing, yeah. Yeah, they're not playing, uh, Dimitri, right. Dimitri Oksharov is injured. Um, so, I mean, three of the favorites are out. So, it means yep. there's a lot of open uh, for surprises this year. And uh, yeah, this is probably the year that you, you will see some unexpected results. And uh, there are many, many, many who can grab this. It's just about getting your shape in top shape in the correct moment and keeping it mm. uh, on a high for five, six, seven days. And I think there yeah. are 20, 30 people who can reach a medal this, uh, this World Championship. So that's quite exciting. Yeah, it's going to be one to watch for sure. I mean, yeah, we here at T2, we're going to be rooting for everyone, but especially you as well, Christian. I'm sure you and the Swedish team can pull some possible upsets or some surprises. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> that'll be definitely good. Well, I guess before we wrap this up, you know, maybe if you just share with some of us, like, what are some of your tips for anyone out there who's hoping to upgrade their, their record setup? Like, do you have any tips about that? Um, I think it's, uh, you have to feel... Um... You have to find what works for you. I mean, mm. look look at your play style. If you're playing aggressive, maybe you should look at some aggressive woods. Uh, if you play yep. more of a control game like Timo, or uh, some sort of these kinds of guys, you need to maybe look at it a little bit differently and try to find what works for you. That's most important. Doesn't doesn't matter what other plays with. Doesn't matter what the mm. other people say. The most important is how you feel with your racket. I mean, um, find what you want to 
how you want to play in table tennis, then look at it from uh, from afar and uh, okay, I want to win points by attacking with four. Okay, then you can mm. work yourself from there. So try to find the uh, yeah how you want to win matches, and then you go from there. I think is my best tip. Yeah, that's great. Find what works works for you, and then just go from there. Well, and one last question as well, maybe Christian, like to just maybe just share with us out there if there's anyone expire, aspiring to be like you or to actually be to end up in the world stage one day. Uh, what is one statement that you can share with them or can tell them? Uh, I mean, I, it's basically the same with the racket. There are many different ways to reach um, your highest potential. You you just have mm -hmm. to have to see what works for you. For me, it was all about having, I have always loved going to practice because I think it's fun. Some players want to improve, like you have different goals. Mm -hmm. So it's very cliche, but uh, you really need to find what works for you and why you're doing it. It's, uh, it's, it's cliche, but it's true. <laughs> Look, thank you so much for today, Christian. Like we have thank learned you. a lot of things about you. Um, a lot of us and your fans out there, we are really rooting for you. Hopefully you're, you. able, you'll be able to bring some medals home for Sweden uh, in the World Champs coming up. I hope so too. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Right. It was a pleasure.